Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to the start of another season, Football Manager 19, episode 93. We are with our third and final club in this save. We're at West Brom. And take a look at our friendlies. Not too bad. We got drilled by PSG 4-1. Brendan Taylor, the lone goal. Uh, Mbappe with a brace. Uh, that was a nice way to start the season off. But we did make some money. Uh, Newcastle, 3-3 three, three, draw. Hazen Bozdag, Franischini, and Brendan Taylor with goals. Uh, he scored in the 84th minute. Pion Sisto, that's a familiar name. Did he play for us? I may have had him in another save. Name's familiar anyway. Uh, he scored a minute later. FC Barcelona, 6-1. They did have a man sent off. Chikwuma with a brace. Aguilera, midfielder with a goal. Brady with a goal. Anthony Thompson and Steven Swarad with goals late. Then we had a 2-2 draw with Barnsley, Anthony Thompson, and Danny Olmo with goals. Uh, Coventry, our affiliate club, we got a 2-0 win. Riccio with a brace. River Plate, a 0-0 draw. And Deporto, Deportivo Alaves, 5-2 win. Uh, they had a man sent off in the 8th minute. They did score two goals in the first 17 minutes uh, and were up 2-0 before our numbers overwhelmed them. Anthony McDonald, Lloyd Lloyd, uh, Chikwuma with a brace, and young Mario Russo, who we talked about uh, the last game of last season uh, where he made his debut against Man City in the, uh, in the final. Uh, he scored a goal in the 81st minute. So we're going to open with Southampton today. Now, we... Um, you know, when I, when I do these games, I try to give full disclosure... Uh, transfers is not my best thing uh, because typically I go in and I always let my scouts find the players, right? And so usually I'm just looking, hey, is this player an upgrade? If he's an upgrade or it's a position that we're weak at, then I will sign, try to sign them if it's in, in the price range that I feel is affordable. And... You know, and I just signed players. So sometimes that's great. I haven't had too many issues. Other times, um, th and this is like the second time I can think that I've done this, I just screw the pooch and I've signed too many players. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with the transfer window opening so far ahead of when contracts expire. So, like, our last game, let's take a look here. So, last year, our last match was May 23rd, and yet they don't fall off until the 30th of June, a month later. But yet you have three weeks of transfers, and you've got to be active or you're just going to lose all the best players, right? So, it's, it's a conundrum for me. Uh, so, we were very active. Let's see, I believe there was a email down here. I don't know. Anyway, I think we, we signed. We were the most active club. We didn't spend the most money, but we spent a shit ton of money. So let's look at finances first. So we're sitting on $154 million. We've gone up uh, from $121 to $147 to $154 uh, we are spending $102 million on payroll, $130 million payroll, and $107 million left in our transfer budget. And we spent some money, let me tell you. So let's look at the transfers. We'll only have one match today, but let's look at the transfers. Uh, let's look at, well, well, we'll look at all of them. So we had a total of $202 million sold. 145 million dollars spent so let's start off uh at the end of the season it started fast and furious our midfielder uh dale sinclair uh he wanted to move on uh and you know we needed to you know i was thinking we needed to kind of cut salary we needed to you know free up a couple of players i really liked dale uh, if we look at his history, we bought him for two and a half million. We sold him for twenty-one and a half. To be fair, 
it was just an offer I couldn't pass up, right? Um, but with us, he had 18 starts, eight sub appearances. He was injured several times, so I felt he was expendable, and we made a shit ton of money, and that could go up to $28 million. Then Liverpool came in on Sebastian Strobel. Uh, again, uh, I really like him. We picked him up for $32 million a couple of years ago from Bayern, and you know he played 15 matches after coming over that year, and then last year he started 30 matches for us, playing a 6-8-8. Really solid defensive midfielder uh, is where he played mostly for us. We sold him for 35 and a half. It can go up to 44 and a half. Uh, and that's basically, there's nothing in there that he's not, you know, 50 games or something. And we get, a, you know, $10 million. Uh, Stuart Coleman, our center back. Young guy, 25 years old. Center back was a position I was looking to upgrade. Uh, we had signed another guy last year. Stuart became, he was basically third in the rotation, which made him expendable since I wanted to upgrade. Uh, and so we had paid 850000 for him from Norwich, sold him to Southampton for $25.5 million. Uh, he did start 28 matches last year, uh, 6.83 rating. Great player. I mean, I like him a lot. Uh, James Dunnett, a young player, goes to Portsmouth for a little little bit of change. Uh, Ryan Nyambi really wasn't happy with him on the, at the right back position. Wanted to upgrade, uh, so you know we had brought him in for 16 million from Krasnodar. He started, you know, pr you know, pretty solid. 34 starts last year. Sold him to Lokomotiv Moscow for five and a quarter. So we took a bath on him. Uh, but, you know, again, it was looking to really upgrade that, and nobody in England wanted him, so that's why I took the bath. Uh, Ramon Esteban, our striker up top, uh, 28. He was one of our older guys. He's good. He just wasn't getting any playing time. And then we had noticed we had a couple of really young strikers that I wanted to get some playing time, and that made him expendable. Uh, we had paid uh, 22 and a half million, uh, and we've sold him for 16 million uh, to River Plate. That was at the very end of last season. Uh, that was at the end of our season. I guess it counted towards their books. Uh, Caputo, our starting keeper. So we had re-signed him to a new contract with a higher buyout clause, which he wouldn't let us get rid of. He wasn't great, wasn't great, but, you know, he was solid. You know, he was solid. And uh, anyway, so, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't looking to move him, but uh, Crystal Palace came in. We paid 8.75 to get him from Hamburger in Germany, and uh, Crystal Palace came in and bought him out for $31.5 million, uh, which was his uh, release clause. And so off he went. And, of course, that meant we had to sign a new keeper. Uh, so, you know, you can see these are within two weeks. So, you know, these were just coming hot and heavy. David Todd was actually end of contract last year. Uh, Calcutt McNamara, uh, this was, uh, he went to Coventry on a loan. Coventry's our affiliate. I tried to move him, but nobody wanted him. So, quit tearing up my cables, man. Down there, Fred. I have to kick your butt. I have to kick your butt, dude. Um, uh, Eric Garcia, one of our young center backs, again, was not looking to, to move him. We just basically got an offer. We couldn't refuse. We bought him for two and a half million from Man City, sold him for 18 and a quarter. Nice little profit for us. Uh, again, he was, uh, 34 starts in the league last year. So we've got a lot of starting starts that we've got to replace, uh, Edson Flores loaned out, John Williams, John Langston, no big deal. Eduardo Perry, uh, he was a right back. Not bad, not bad. I was, you know, but he was, I, this is the point I got where I was like, holy crap, because you can look at my dates for signings at July 10th, and Perry is uh, the 18th. I noticed I was well over surplus. I had so many people I couldn't even register them all. Uh, 
So I was like, I got I to gotta move some bodies. Uh, Perry was just surplus. So uh, we ended up buying him for $3 million from uh, Pro Vercelli in Italy and uh, sold him to Middlesbrough for $1.1. Hello. Hey. Recording. But I answered because I knew you were in weather. Ooh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, be careful. Uh, yeah, he had gone walking for a little while while there was a break in the rain and then uh, came in, talked to me for a few minutes and went back upstairs. It's got ice building up in the bottom again. All right. Bye. So he was surplus to requirements, so we sold him for 1.1. This is the one that hurt. I wasn't aware Matt Ingram was angry. Tottenham came in and made an offer. I refused it. I was like, Matt's our captain. Probably one of our best players, if not our best player. And I don't want to trade him. And after I rejected it, then I get called to a team meeting with two of our backup players uh, who I don't even really give a shit about. And uh, they're like, man, you're you're screwing with Matt's career. And and then, so I go and I look at Matt and I look at his, at his uh, what do you call it, his dynamics here. And his negatives were that he was angry that he was not allowed to speak to Tottenham. And I'm favored personnel, piece of shit. Uh, so um, anyway, he. Uh, so I went ahead and I transfer listed him, got a bunch of offers. Uh, Tottenham came in, offered $41 million. We bought him from Middlesbrough for 16 and a half. Uh, you know, he started uh, 28 games his first full year, 33 games last year. Uh, didn't want to move him, but $41 million. I was like, I can't turn that down, right? Uh, Eric Grady, uh, he goes to Dundee on loan, couple, a bunch more loans. Uh, Jan Lowe, remember I was really happy when we signed him, young German, a few years ago. Really hasn't played again couldn't fit him in, couldn't get him registered. So I was like, I got to move him. So uh, Leeds ended up picking him up. Uh, we bought him for 2.1 uh, from Paderborn and sold him for 5.5. So uh, he he played that one year for us, 10 starts, eight subs. Uh, keep going down. Yeah, there's more. Uh, these are all loans or freeze. Yeah, so we were just loaning. These are just late, late loans right at the trade deadline. So $202 million in sales, a bunch of players. I mean, a bu bunch of good players. Uh, Sinclair, Strobel, Coleman, Niambi, Caputo, Garcia. I mean, th those are Ingram. Those are all starters <laughs> and a lot of starts. All right, so let's take a look at who we signed. So Aloy Gonzalez Martinez, we've signed him for a million from Grenada. He's on a youth work permit, he, so he'll be with our under-23 team. Uh, he's a striker, really good ratings, uh, four-and-a-half star potential. Uh, once he's developed enough to get a contract, he should get his work permit. Uh, but he was he was an investment uh, for a million dollars. Edison Flores, is this a guy that I sold? Yeah, okay. So we loaned him out. 
We bought him for 900000 Again, he's on a youth work permit um, right back. So, yeah, he's, he's decent. He's got really good strength. Not very natural, naturally fit, but Colombian. So I've got to get away from signing all these foreign players. That's what screwed me up, is, and, and I, I'm, I'm off on my homegrown players. So that's, what, that's what's screwing me up. Uh, Steven Swarad, Man City, we signed him for a million. I knew we were going to need some central midfielders this year. I, I wanted to upgrade. Um, so we signed him. Not bad. Four and a half star potential again. He's going to need to develop, uh, you know. So he was he's a young Manchester City kid. Um, Bonolo Cuela, Orlando Pirates, $600,000. We have loaned him out. Again, youth work permit. These were guys that just when they popped up, I was like, okay, I can get them relatively cheap and, uh, you know, build them up and then either sell them for, for money or – break them into the, you know, senior squad. Uh, Mark Kelly, from what we went on a tear, we gutted the Watford side. Uh, Watford is actually in the championship. They got relegated this past, uh, last season. So Mark Kelly, hey, quit that. What are you doing? Quit, quit, quit. Um, so he is a left back. So this was uh, a spot that I was looking to upgrade. Um, Two and a half star, three star potential, but really, really solid ratings. And uh, we do have a player that is uh, not on the, uh, not going to be playing this season because of him, and we were unable to move him. So we signed him for four point three. Uh, they had originally picked him up for one hundred and seventy thousand from Crusaders. So nice little profit for them going down. Uh, Jacobo Riccio, we signed him for 11.75 to play right back. 20 years old, three-star, five-star potential. Awesome physicals, work rate, positioning, teamwork, determination. Uh, he can cross the ball a little bit. So looking for him to make an impact for us. Uh, again, looking at that midfield, and I just lost track of how many players I was signing this was uh, one of our two big signings, so let's keep him till last. Uh, another Watford player, Jetmir Biluku. Uh, he can play all three back line. He can play defensive mid, three-star current, three-and-a-half star. Well-rounded. You know, he's got all the ratings. He can play just about anything. He can play those backs, but he can't cross very well, even though he has the pace and everything. Uh, probably more center back. And, and he's 6'6". Six, six. He's huge with good jumping reach and heading. So, uh, and then possibly, possibly with his uh, marking. He doesn't really have the passing I like in that defensive mid, but that's okay. Uh, so we sign him. Uh, we'll look at him. Alfonso Daniel Sassuolo. Am I pronouncing that right? Uh, anyway, another uh, defensive mid, central mid. Again, well-rounded, really good passing, free kick taking. I was like, oh my gosh, he's already wanted. <laughs> he's already wanted for but for loan. Uh, I I'm I'm keeping him on the club. Torino had loaned him for a million dollars. Uh, we signed him from Sos Sosuolo for thirteen million dollars. Uh, nice chunk of change for them. Peter Douglas, Bournemouth, new keeper. Uh, he is twenty-six. He is English. Hopefully he uh, gets homegrown status and helps us out there. Uh, One-on-ones is really good, handling, kicking. Uh, first touch is not good, so we're not going to play sweeper keeper with him. And throwing the ball, well-rounded, three and a half, three and a half. He's already maxed out. Same age that Caputo was. So, uh, you know, he was signed to be replacement. Uh, a lot less money, too. Uh, mm, that's going to be one of the three last guys. This is a guy that I really liked. He came to us from Cardiff for seven and a half. He's an Algerian with 40 caps. He's 22 years old. Lemayne Yusfi, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he is a uh, He's going to be the replacement for Matt Ingram on the right wing. 
and when moving up to the to the winger slot if we play up top uh, really good physicals natural fitness is good technicals could be a little bit better he doesn't do long shots which is good average passing which is all you can ask for um, flair decent vision he's only five six that's all right though uh let's see who else uh he was a free transfer 30 years old i was looking for some veteran leadership he was a free who did he play for he played for uh he played for arsenal yeah arsenal had paid 46 million for him they let him go end of contract so we were able to sign him uh defensive mid central mid Still solid physicals, even at 30. It's a little older than I like to sign, but I knew we were going to have a lot of turnover, and I knew he you know, he still had really solid ratings and could do a job and give us a veteran presence. Uh, Lloyd Lloyd, we got on a loan from Watford. Uh, he's a left winger. He's going to back up Danny Olmo over there. Uh, Robinson is in the, in the group, but uh, I thought he was better. Anthony Thompson, another central midfielder. This is another screw-up on my part. I had an offer on this guy. It sat and sat and sat. I put an offer on a right back from, uh, I think from Everton as well, possibly Chelsea, I forget. They both accepted, but this guy's came in first. And so the other one got rejected because in the Premier you can only take in two loan players this would have been the guy I would have changed out if i would have known or, or thought about it uh anthony mcdonald uh this was uh again this is when matt ingram will you quit it when matt ingram left i knew i was going to need some depth so he can play all three across the middle all three you know both wingers and the number 10 he's not great but he came to us from hearts we got him for seven and a quarter million. Uh, he's been a lifetime hearts player. So he was just more depth. So let's look at our big guys. So Miguel Aguilera from Watford, uh, defensive mid and uh, the central mid and number 10. Uh, he's 23. He's from Chile, 38 caps, five goals all around. I think he is a monster. I think he's going to be great for us. And he is going to slot right into the center of that back of that midline. Uh, 25 million. Uh, Giannone is a center back. Uh, you know, again, I was looking to upgrade and this guy popped up and I went, holy crap. Uh, so I really like him. Uh, we'll see who gets the starts. But we've got, basically we've got five guys vying for two, two spots. So uh, we'll be moving some of them on probably at the winter transfer deadline. And last guy is another center back. Can play up in the mid, but he's more of a center back. Uh, and that is Lutz Grasa. And he came to us uh, from Dortmund. Dortmund just signed him from Leverkusen. So he's, he's uh, you know, had some moves here recently. But, you know, they bought him for, you know, a million more and then sold him for, they made a nice profit. Almost doubled their money. So I think, you know, I don't know if we've strengthened our squad. Anyway, we've got we've got some nice players. I like the players that we got. Uh, if we come in and look at our ability now, we've got more four stars uh, and three and a half stars than we did last year, for whatever that's worth. Uh, we did lose a couple of scouts, a couple of coaches. Liverpool came in and poached one of our youth coaches, uh, literally – two or three days ago and uh we had to replace him but uh anyway let's get to the match so today we are playing southampton they are favorites we're on the road it is wet there's not any wind so if we look at our tactics i told you i was going to change some tactics i've got a 4-3-3 with a wide midline uh, I did bring this one back, uh, our 442 with two Volantes. That's from a couple of seasons ago. And I kept this one, the 4141. I had a couple of others that I liked, that I thought I was going to like, just didn't like how they worked out. So we've still got some, some work to do. 
uh, in, in getting familiar with these, but you know, a few more games. So I think we're on the road. I'm going to go with, I want to go with this one just to try it out. All right, we're going to go with the full team. Uh, I do have, all right, so Chris Courtney at left back. Uh, so, he, yeah, he's injured. A maximum of 75, Mark Kelly. I'm going to go ahead and start Kelly. And then, who else? I want to pay a little more attention to that this year. So Declan Rice. Uh, let's go with Danielle. And Chikwuma. And I want... Uh, Mario Russo. So Russo is one of those young strikers. And so he is uh, 16 finishing. He's got some pace. The other one is uh, Ciaran Malone, another striker with 16 finishing. So like both of those guys. Uh, also, yeah, we'll, we'll look. Uh, who was the, uh, it was the German guy, uh, Walter, Henrik Walter. Couldn't register him. Uh, Bosdak, uh, the young, the young Italian striker, I think couldn't register him. Uh, yeah, just, you know, just didn't have enough slots. All right, well, let's get to it here. Lacking in match fitness. We're going to be a little outmatched here in the midfield. We're not, you know, Aguilera is more, oh, you know what? I do want to... Let's check his development. So if we play Segundo Volante on attack, let's do that. All right, dressing room. Do this for our fans. Let's try to build them up. Start of the season. And I'm sorry there was so much... Uh, pre-game stuff there but yeah we just had a lot of movement this year um i'm recording this it's 7 20 <laughs> and uh started recording about seven o'clock but i've been doing this since for about three hours and that was just to get to this point all right come on boys uh, really okay come on there's a n nice ball outside to Korozlov. Uh, Maximilano Coelho, first goal of the season. Nice cross. Beat a bunch of our guys. Boy, boy, boy. All right, there's the header out. Right to the other team. Looks like it's going to be that kind of year again. Missed the slide tackle. Intercepted by Taylor. Quick touches up to Danielle. Oh, he lumps it. That was a bad ball. All right. Danielle recovers. Robinson back to Danielle. Oh, he was off sides. Yep. Franaschini. I'm really hoping some of our strikers can break through this year. Oh, he was well off sides. I mean, it wasn't even a question. <laughs> All right. Uh, encourage. Fired up, motivated, cool deal. First yellow card. That's for their player. Uh, hold on here. Let's... Uh, That's what I want.
All right, so three shots. Three shots. Not happy. All right, halftime. All three of theirs are on target. Let's see. Let's look at our tactics. Can I play you as an anchor? Now, you have 12 marking. If we go there, that takes Russo out of play. How is he doing, though? Russo, 6.4. If I put him there, then who do I have for a defensive mid? I've got Harris. All right, we'll go with that. Pep talk. Uh, sympathize. All right, down one nothing. Oh no. Okay, well, he didn't get carded, so that's good. Uh, let's check this tactic again. All right, higher. I don't want to use the trap. Let's do that and drop here. Work the ball. We are going to overlap. Come on, fellas. All right, I've already made one sub. Anybody playing horrible? Uh, Brendan Taylor. Danielle is tired. Um, Mid-center. I could bring Grasser up and then put... Yeah, let's bring Grasser up, and then we'll bring Giannone in for his debut. That'll be our second sub of the match. Uh, push forward. Come on, fellas. Get on him. Get on him. What are you doing? Walk him down. Shit. Oh, that was a heavy touch. We should have been all over that. All right, there's a nice tackle. Grasser makes the move. Lays it. Franaschini! First goal of the season. Oh, that was a nice steal. Pass through. What a setup by Grasser. Nice job. Nice job. All right, we're taking more shots. I like that. Uh, let's see. Franashini, let's bring uh let's bring Chikwuma on. All right, boys, push him out. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Get on the ball. Oh, that might be the closest VAR I have ever seen. Ooh, man. Push forward. We're playing attacking. Aguilera picks up a yellow. Well, a draw is better than a loss, right? That's I, I have to believe that. And the goal, you know, based on last year is to not lose 
more than 50% of our matches. <laughs> that would suck. Because that's what caused us problems last year. All right. Blow the whistle. We'll take the draw. We get the point. It's not great. A lot of yellow cards for them. Um, I'm going to give the tactics some time because, you know, we aren't fully situated. We do have a bunch of new players. Uh, disappointed in the number of shots. Targets. Possession. Uh... Well, okay, I'm I'm proud of the comeback because we were underdogs, right? <sighs> Honors are even. Aguilera makes his debut. Franashini ends his goal drought. Uh, Ten hours without a goal. That's nice. So we're not in Europa this year, so we'll see a lot more league. You know, well, all we will see is league action, right? <laughs> um, but you knew that. You knew that. Uh, let's see. What else? So, yeah, I'm interested to see what you think of the transfers because, like I said, I know I went overboard uh, and there were, you know, but a lot of it was just out of my hands because there was so much activity with people coming in. And I just got another, I bet it's a loan. I bet it's a loan, but let's find out. Walter, yes, and we will loan him out. They're paying 60% of his salary. Uh, yeah, I will definitely send you. All right, we did sell out our season tickets. So where do we come back here? Let's come back. Oh, no, we do. Oh, we play the EFL Cup. I don't think that's important. The EFL Cup, is that... Uh, that's this one, right? So that is, they want us to reach the fifth round. So we'll come back for that one. Let's come back for that one and Liverpool. That's in close proximity. Uh, but we'll come back for the EFL second round and uh, Liverpool. So we'll see you guys then. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you don't mind. Excuse me. And please let me know what you think in the comments about the transfers and, uh, uh, you know, how bad we screwed up. <laughs> or maybe we did good. Uh, who do you think some of the signings will be that might do a job for us and become West Brom stars? See you guys next time. Bye.